Welcome back to What Are Team Ips with General Disturbance. This is the AT-15A. It's a Tier 7 British premium tank destroyer. Located on the south spawn of Muravanka, this one is under the command of Jamie2006 of Philo. And he's got two platoon mates, uh, both from Philo as well, including Cosmic Frog 911. I don't actually know the name of the other one because I've never met him before. But we can see Cosmic Frog driving off into the distance because Jamie hasn't loaded yet. Well, the AT-15A is actually one of the intermediate designs that they came up with whilst they were on the project that eventually became the A-39 Tortoise. It was uh, basically a tank assault tank destroyer to be used against the Germans. But uh, it uh, they started the project in uh, during the war. And this particular design was designed in on the 5th of October 1943. There was no prototype, so it never got built. But it is an interesting tank destroyer nonetheless. It's got a 17-pounder gun as its main armament. So it's capable of doing 150 alpha and penetrating through 171 millimeters of armor. With the premium rounds, it'll go through 239 millimeters. So Quite decent damage for a tank destroyer and a fairly fast fire rate as well. DPM is 2,183 hit points per minute. But he's firing a long way into the distance there. Yeah, standard reload is 4.12 seconds. And we can see here that Jamie's got it down to 3.21. And it's actually quite a good tank destroyer to have if you're eventually going down the British line to get the tortoise because you can train your crews in this vehicle. It's also quite a good in-your-face attack uh, tank destroyer because it's um, designed to bully the enemy. There is a weak spot, it's the same spot as usual, yes it's the Capola. In this case, it's the Capola, which is there on the, uh, as you say, the left side of the vehicle as you're looking at it with the machine guns. Yeah, that's the spot you should aim at if you ever get one of, uh, ever come across one of these. But uh, if you can hit the rear and the sides of it, then you can obviously do some damage. It's got two 28 millimeters of armor at the front and 152 at the sides. And you see, just got two shots into a Super Hellcat. That Scorpion's pulling back quickly enough to avoid any damage. Now, there are some pretty nasty tanks to his right at the moment. He got hit by the Super Hellcat with a 90mm round, but it just couldn't catch. And he did actually just kill the Scorpion, I believe. Oh, he said, no, the Scorpion was killed by the KV-2, but he did get a fire on the guy. Now he's getting shots into a T-20. And you can see the armor's blocking the shots that they're firing at him. The only thing he has to worry about, really, is those KV-2s to his right. There's a number of them. It looks like the enemy Super Hellcat, although we can't see him, is actually firing rounds in this direction and getting hit. Nice shot into the Hellcat. Oh, he finally got hit by an air roll, B-39. One more shot to kill the Hellcat and he gets him. Now he needs to be aware of that A, that V-39, rather, ARL V-39. There he is, he's off in the distance. He managed to do 247 hit points of damage, rather the, um, he did get a pen. We're now starting to get pens from some of these tanks nearby. But we have actually got a steel wall. Oh, we narrowly missed the Hellcat there. He's bouncing rounds off the T-20, but firing rounds back down the line of fire. Yep, still bouncing that guy's 19 millimeters. They just can't get a shot into him. Oh, Super Hellcat's changed position. Now going to push on the Oni. Oh, found the ARLV 39 again. 
Now that guy just popped down because you can see his weak spot, which is the cupola directly on top of the vehicle. And the good thing about the AT-15A is it has a, a gun, um, um, it's got a gun arc of 25 degrees either side of the centre, which means 50 degrees overall, and it means that he could still shoot at the ARL even while he's looking straight forward at the Super Hellcat. Yeah, I think he's around about there. That only goes down. Now we've got the ARL. Oh, one shot in, and he gets the kill. That's his second kill of the game after the Hellcat. Now there's a sixth kill advantage to the team now. I think it's a very good chance they're going to win the game. Just look at all the bounces, those green marks on the front of the vehicle. Lots of them. It's a bullet magnet, really, the AT-15A. It attracts 90mm rounds. So long as they can't hit the rear or the sides, you're okay. If they can hit the sides, then you're in trouble. That's why you got hit by the V-39. He might take a round from the Super Hellcat. Now he's turned side onto him, but he's going after the KV-2s. Okay, he's dialing in on Super Hellcat. Nice! And I'm wondering why he's... Is he AFK? He's not moving, and he's out of the game now. He just got hit by the KV-2 on our team. And there's the T-20. He's taking rounds. It looks like he's tracked. And he's out of the game. There's only two enemies left, the KV-2. And, well, one of them just died. So now it's just this KV-2 to win the game. Jamie's having a good game here. 2.7k of damage. Oh, and he gets the kill. So he finishes off the game with another kill. And he's happy. Here's the end of battle stats. And that was an ace tanker game for Jamie 2006 in the AT-15A. He got a spot advantage for spotting at least a thousand hit points of damage. Bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. In this one, he managed to get eight. A shield proof for blocking more damage to the hit points for his own vehicle. A fighter badge for getting at least four kills. He did get four. And a five for effect for doing more damage to the hit points for his own vehicle. He didn't get the high caliber, but he did get a steel wall in that one for blocking the most damage in the game. And yes, he certainly did block a lot of 90 millimeter rounds were fired at the front of the vehicle, but they didn't go for the weak spot, which of course, as I said, is that Capola. Instead, they aim for the blank front of the vehicle, those bits either side of the uh, the, the, the gun and the mantlet. Um, and of course, those are strong points. You don't want to aim for those because you're never going to get through with a 90 millimeter. You're only going to get through if you can hit that little cupola or lob around into the side of the vehicle or the rear because that's where it's weakest. And even then, with 152.4 millimeters on the sides, you probably need an APCR round just to get through it. So, very well played by Jamie, getting a steel wall. Let's have a look at team score. Well, funnily enough, he did get the highest damage in the game. He just didn't get a high caliber because he didn't get 20% of the enemy hit pool. 2,787 hit points of damage to Jamie. 2,503 to Cosmic Frog 911, his platoon mate. And, well, the other one who I can't pronounce. They'll probably tell me what his name is afterwards. And he managed in the IS to get 1,489. So he wasn't a slouch. He just didn't get any kills because mostly he was doing damage and not getting the kill shots. But on uh, for Jamie, it was a high score game on kills because he got the highest number with four. Three kills went to the KV-2 on their team. And, well, Cosmic Frog picked up one kill. Uh, so he wasn't, again, he wasn't slouching. He was playing his uh, his best. And when it came to base XP, yes, it's Jamie again. He's got tops in all four, three columns. Four columns? Three. 1,459, which showed he was the person who was working the hardest in that one. 972 went to Cosmic Frog, second hardest player. And 815 went to the KV-2. 38 shots fired, all 17 pounder shots. 22 direct hits and 20 penetrations. Damage of 2,787, of which 1,468 were at more than 300 meters. It's an accurate gun at long range, and yes, it can yield a lot of damage because it's got a fast fire rate. 17 hits received from the enemy, only two of which actually penetrated. 
15 non-penetrations. One of those penetrations actually came from the ARL v, um, V39. He was actually firing into his side. That's why he got that round in. The other round, I don't remember who actually got the pen, but it looked like it actually went in through the uh, weak spot, the Capola, and that's how he got it through. And 15 non-penetrations, most of those hitting the front plate of the uh, tank. And of course, it's very strong. So, of course, it, the shells were just bounced off or absorbed. 3,600 hit points of damage blocked by armor. Two enemy vehicles spotted, eight enemy vehicles damaged, four killed, 1,669 hit points of spotting assist. Now he earned 62,037 credits in that game, but even after ammunition, uh, he actually took away 72,361 credits. So there must be a bonus in there that's not mentioned because, of course, uh, if you deduct those figures from this figure, you don't end up with a higher figure, no. And uh, yes, he did use consumables, but uh, because he was using the 17-pounder and standard ammo, he was getting decent pen and it wasn't costing him much. He picked up 2,955 XP as well, and he got a bonus for playing in the platoon and for this being a premium vehicle. In fact, it's a fairly decent premium vehicle, the AT-15A. I've been able to bully tanks which are one tier higher than me with this tank destroyer, mainly because, of course, they can't get through the armor without using the premium ammo. And they find it very difficult to get through the weak spots uh, because if you, you can move about to actually hide the weak spots and put the tank on an angle so that they can't put those shots through. So I hope you enjoyed that game. If you did, Please give this video a like, do subscribe to our channel, leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And please do come back to our channel because Jamie's got another game for us a little later on. I'm hoping I'm going to get that one in because uh, he did something rather special with one of his tanks. Thanks for watching.